Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another Mad Meta Magic, where we try to make the magic meta mad. Now, I've got a list here from Clayton225, also in the Discord. Uh, thanks for the art, by the way. <laughs> the resident artist sent me this. And um, I figured I'd give it a try. So it's a beatdown mill, is how it was described to me. And the idea is that uh, you kind of can play through Grave Hate, but you're an aggro deck, but you're mill. So there's this interesting uh, combination of things occurring. Um, and we're very, very focused on a lot of one drops. We have the full play set of crabs. We've got uh, Thieves Guild Enforcer as our primary beatdown creature. It is a one mana one, one with flash. And uh, whenever it or another rogue enters the battlefield under your control, your opponent mills two cards. Um, and then as long as they have eight or more cards in their graveyard, it gets plus two, plus one, and has death touch. So it's an efficiently costed beater that has flash, so we can protect it in theory with drown in the locks and fatal pushes and force negations and stuff like that. Um, our secondary beatdown creature is Soaring Thought Thief which is another two-mana rogue with flash. And as long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, uh, it anthems all of your rogues. And whenever one or more rogues you control attacks, each opponent mills two cards. So it also has flying. So between the crabs and those two creatures, we're milling a lot. And we have a singleton Jasus Phantasm, which is a one-mana 5-5 five five if your opponent has ten or more cards in grave. Um, and then we have uh, Snapcaster to flashback our important spells, Surgical Extraction to try and interrupt our opponent based on whatever they mill, Visions of Beyond. Visions of Beyond strikes me as... I, I, I don't know how fast this deck mills. I haven't played it yet. Uh, Visions of Beyond strikes me as a little bit of a stretch to get to 20 cards, but I suppose even if it's just a cantrip, it's probably good. And because we have uh, plenty of non-humans and human creatures, we are also running Of One Mind as our one-mana draw two cards ability. Um... And then, other than that, it's it's basically just mill. So we're going to see what happens. Out of the sideboard, we have Lull Mage's Domination, which is a mind control if your opponent has a lot of creatures in, or a lot of uh, cards in their graveyard. Uh, for creatures with CMC 3 or less, it can also be amplified if you have more mana than that. Uh, we have Mystical Dispute as our anti-blue counter spell of choice. We have Aether Gust versus red and green decks. Some Thought Seizes, more Surgicals for Grave Hate, and a Luris because all of our permanents are 2 CMC or less. So yeah, let's go ahead and take this into a competitive constructed modern league, and uh, we'll see what happens. I really do not know what to expect and uh, don't really understand how to play this deck, so we're just gonna... I'm gonna make some assumptions and we'll do what we can. Alrighty. Round one, we will reveal Luris. I think the only way this hand would get better is if uh, we had a crab, but I'm good with this. Opponent starts Steam Vents untapped into a Sleight of Hand. It would appear that they are Storm. Um, that's the only deck I know of that plays Sleight of Hand, really, anymore, anyway. We draw a Ruin Crab. Oh, I wish this was a blue source. Then the crab would be a lot better than it is right now. Um, okay, this is really bad. But we are going to fetch up a Watery Grave and play the Crab. Because next turn I can play Thieves Guild Enforcer and then Of One Mind uh, to try and reload a little bit. Hopefully getting a free counterspell. My opponent plays an Electromancer, so that is going to get pushed like 100%. We get a Visions of Beyond. Um, mill our opponent first. Grape Shot and Empty the Warrens. Push the Electromancer, because to not do that is suicide. Pass the turn. No attacks. Opponent untaps. They sleight of hand again. They play a Shivan Reef and are now passing. They're going to repeal the crab. Alright, flash in Thieves Guild Enforcer. Mill our opponent some more. It is now a 3-2. They unsummon our crab. We untap and draw. Fatal push. Hmm. So I can play the Soaring Thought Thief. I think we just replay the crab, because I would rather have access to a fatal push for a cost reducer. Hit our opponent for three. They untap. The fact that my opponent has passed in flames in the grave and we've been milling them does not bode well for us. Opponent plays a Baral. So in response to any ritual here, I will push. Okay. Opponent gets a Manamorphos. They're down to four cards in hand. I'm not sure they can just storm off this turn. Grape shot to kill our creatures. That is probably 
advantageous to us. <laughs> um, it does mean, though, that our of one mind gets a lot worse. Man. What are the odds that Surgical Past in Flames wins the game? My opponent could have a third Grape Shot or a, empty, a second Empty the Warrens, but... <laughs> they don't! <laughs> oh, Surgical Extraction, the most broken of cards. Okay, we gotta bring in the Thought Seizes. The other Surgicals here are important. Uh, Force of Negation strikes me as important. Mystical Dispute, probably worth bringing in. I'm gonna drop the Cling to Dusts. They're just cantrips here, so I think we can get away with that. Uh, I'm going to cut one Drown in the lock. It is still important, but I've got a feeling my opponent is going to be playing um, Pieces of the Puzzle as the card that I'm trying to think of. <sighs> my only question about that is, does it matter? I think I'm going to cut a couple of Visions of Beyond. It's unlikely we get enough cards into my opponent's grave for it to be an Ancestral Recall. I do want some number of cantrips, but maybe like cut the Visions of Beyond and cut the Of One Mind. We'll try it like this. Now we're just maxed out on Surgical with Thought Seizes as well. So the only reason that that Surgical killed my opponent is because they had no other way to buy cards back from the grave. Which is pretty epic. And all of their storm wind conditions were in the grave. So that's not gonna happen... My opponent just sided into 69 cards. <laughs> There's no way that is correct. There is no universe where you play 69 card storm <laughs> versus beatdown mill. Uh... Yeah, like, don't ever do that, because all you're going to do is make your deck horribly inconsistent, uh, and your opponent's just going to mill you anyway. <laughs> like, it's, it's, like, a lot of people would view it as starting with extra life. Um, imagine, so imagine if you were playing against Burn, and you could opt to say, instead of starting at 20 life, I'm going to start at 23 life, but I also have to mulligan to 5, and put back a land. Like, it's, it, I don't, it doesn't strike me as a good idea. That's all I'm saying. All right, well, we've got a Thought Seize and a Thieves Guild Enforcer. We also have five lands, and we curve out at, like, two. So I'm going to mulligan. Okay, this is infinitely better. Keep. I'm going to put back Fatal Push. Opponent starts Steam Vent Serum Visions. We will start Legendary Double Crab here. All right, we untap. Draw Watery Grave. Play Watery Grave. Play Crab. Pass the turn. Opponent opts. Plays a Spire Bluff. And passes. We draw Drown in the lock. Play Crab. Play Polluted Delta. Mill our opponent for a lot. Save targets. Always yield. Always yield. They got Aria Flame as an additional... Um as an additional win condition, it looks like. So I think what we do is we stop on my opponent's draw step, and we're going to surgical something. The question is what? We didn't hit their big card advantage spell. Um, you know what? I don't know. And the fact that they have 69 cards actually makes trying to surgical on their draw step a little bit worse. I could hit a cost reducer. Like surgical Baral. I think we can wait. It's unlikely they're going to kill us here. Like, they would have to have Cost Reducer, Ritual, Ritual, Manamorphose into something crazy. They're going to abrade to kill a crab. Alright, crab down. We untap. We draw an island. Play Flooded Strand, mill our opponent. Fetch Flooded Strand, get an island, mill our opponent. So we've hit multiple pieces of the puzzle... Lots of cantrips. Okay, I'm just going to pass and leave up Drown in a lock. Opponent plays a Mountain. They play Baral. If I counter Baral, that may force them to react. I could Surgical Remand, and then they may not have. Um, you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to Surgical Remand. Because I kind of want to take a look at their hand. Grape Shot, Desperate Ritual, Pieces of the Puzzle. So they're holding a Grape Shot. Let me just take the Snipping Tool and get a clip of that so I don't forget. Okay, so opponent does not have a way to react, and I think this does matter. 
So I'm going to counter Baral. So storm count is three. My opponent can grape shot to kill the crab. All right. That is probably good news for us. So next turn we can put Luris into our hand. All right. We untap. They didn't even target the extra copies at us. We draw a Snapcaster. So my opponent can cast, like, pieces of the puzzle if they want. <sighs> they have a Salundi vision. I think it's better to just put Luris in my hand. It's very unlikely they can just storm off. Pass the turn. Okay, opponent casts Serum Visions, which is the card they draw. Next turn, it's looking like we have at least two options. I can play Luris and then play, like, a crab, then play a land. I can play Luris, play an island out of my hand, and then just leave up, like, Snap Surgical. Okay. So my opponent dumps an Aria of Flame into the grave. Along with Pyretic Ritual and a Pathway. So they're holding Desperate Ritual, Sleight of Hand, pieces... They're not holding pieces of the puzzle. I have to look all over the screen to try and figure out what they're holding. So they're holding Salundi Vision, Desperate Ritual, Lightning Bolt, Sleight of Hand... One unknown. We untap, draw an island. I think I'm just going to play Luris, play a crab, then mill them. There's the past in flames. So we might actually be toast now. Because I don't have enough. I could surgical past in flames if I had Snapcaster up, but I don't. So there's Pyretic Ritual. Desperate Ritual. Desperate Ritual. Flashback. Yeah, we're actually dead. Because my opponent has multiple grape shots. So that was the incorrect line to take there. Not what I expected my opponent to do, though, to be honest. Um, hmm. I'm going to cut one Mystical Dispute and bring a Cling to Dust back in, but I really am not 100% sure on what the sideboard should be here. I would like to play first. I will reveal Luris. We have a Thieves Guild Enforcer, Drown in the Lock, and Surgical. I think we can do better. This is definitely better. I will keep this. And I'm going to put back a Misty Rainforest. Start Island into Crab. Pass the turn. Opponent starts Spire Bluff Canal. Serum Visions. Okay. We untap. I actually should have kept the Misty Rainforest, I think, but... Play Polluted Delta. Mill our opponent, fetch with Polluted Delta, get a Watery Grave, mill our opponent, Thought Seize our opponent, so we get perfect information here. A Braid, a Braid, Aria, Flame, Desperate Ritual, Past in Flames. So I think I take Past in Flames and Surgical that. We're losing the Crab, but by Surgicaling Past in Flames, we completely eliminate our opponent's ability to do... The only problem is Aria of Flame. I can Surgical Desperate Ritual to take them off of Desperate Ritual, because they have one in hand, and I could do so even on their draw step. I can't take their land from them, unfortunately. That would be epic if they had, like, another Shivan Reef in their hand instead of an island. Um, I can take Baral. Yeah, we got to take, I think, Aria of Flame. I could take a Braid and get a Braid on their draw step, but then they could Desperate Ritual into Aria of Flame. Let's take Aria Flame. We'll stop on their draw step. Surgical Desperate Ritual. Okay. And two in their library. They're now holding a Mystical Dispute as the card they drew. So opponent can, like, main phase a Braid if they want to. They can play a bra uh, Baral. Okay, they play the Abraid. I would like to draw another Black Source here. All right, that's a Thought Seize. So we know they're holding these cards plus Mystical Dispute. I think I'm just going to pass and then Thieves Guild Enforcer. They mill Island Manamorphose. We untap. They abrade. We draw Fatal Push, which is good because of Brawl. Let's get a reevaluation of the hand here. Third Abraid, Baral, Mystical Dispute, Past in Flames. I think I take Dispute? Yeah, yeah, I'll take Dispute here. I can push Baral, 
I can trade my Soaring Thought Thief for an Abraid. We untap and draw an island. Fatal push. Pass the turn. Not going to play this island just in case I draw a crab. I'm going to cast a Serum Visions. They don't have a second mana here. We draw Jace's Phantasm. Alright, play an island. Play the Phantasm. Which can't be abraded. And play the Thought Thief. Pass the turn. So they're on a four turn clock. Well, technically a three turn as long as Soaring Thought Thief stays alive. They play Baral. Alright. We untap. Draw Swamp. Go to combat. Attack, attack. We mill our opponent for two. Spire Bluff Canal Serum Visions. Put Luris into our hand. I am going to play the Swamp here. Um, because if I draw like a land or a fetch land, I want to be able to play Luris, play the Crab, then play the land. Opponent bolts the Thought Thief. Interesting they didn't use a Braid. Especially if they're going to have to get aggressive. I'm pretty sure they had another Braid and this is not one that they cast. We drew a Thought Thief. Play Luris. Gets remanded. That's bad. They get to loot. Okay. That was a pretty good top deck. Go to combat. Hit them for five. They go to eight. They opt. They get a mountain. They bolt. Opponent, what are you doing? <laughs> it's just... Okay. Well, we go to nine. I don't think that was right. Play Luris. Play Phantasm. Pass the turn. I really, really feel like they should not have thrown those lightning bolts the way they did, but it really seems like that would have been better pointed at, at my face. Just just my opinion though. I'm not a I'm not an expert gift storm player, in fact. Uh, the nastiest insult I've ever received on, on YouTube from a, a YouTube comment was the fact that I played Gift Storm one time uh, badly. So, I don't really even care what's in their hand anymore. We untap. We draw Soaring Thought Thief. They have to block because I have lethal. So go to combat. Attack them for eight. They go to three. So I'll play a Thieves Guild Enforcer. Mill them and play a Thieves' Guild Enforcer and mill them. Pass the turn. I now have four separately lethal creatures. So, that game was an absolute indication as to why you don't side up to 69 cards, um, even for the meme, because my opponent, it's turn 10, and my opponent hit their third land. They also cast, like, four cantrips, too. Like, Serum Visions, Opt, just never drew any more lands. It, it's not worth the extra life. It's the same reason I wouldn't play, what is that card, like, Providence? It's from Shadows Over Innistrad block, where you start at 26 life it's a, if it's in your opener. And it's like a 9 mana white sorcery or some nonsense. Anyway, I'll see you guys in round 2. Alright, round 2, here we go. We get to be on the play. We will start by revealing Luris. Potentially, this hand is very good. Um, I will keep. And I'm gonna start Polluted Delta because I have a plan. It may not be a good plan, and if my opponent's playing a Hand Hate deck, it may actually be a terrible plan. But, they are also Luris. Boggles? Oh no. Alright, Fetch with Polluted Delta. Shock Watery Grave. Play Thieves Guild Enforcer. Mill my opponent. Razor Verge Thicket Horizon Canopy. Slippery Boggle resolves. We untap. Draw Force of Negation. Okay, that is potentially very important. Play Hedron Crab. Play Scalding Tarn. Mill my opponent. Save targets. Always yield. Fetch Scalding Tarn. Get an island. Mill my opponent some more. And I think I of one mind. Because I really want to draw another blue card. Yeah, okay. Go to combat. Attack for three. Now if my opponent plays any really scary auras, we can force... I can surgical if I'm worried. What would I be worried about? Like maybe a spirit dancer? I could see that being real concerning. 
They're holding Ethereal Armor, Griff's Boon, Rancor, Path, Double Temple Garden. All right, let's get out the old snipping tool because Surgical does not reveal your opponent's hand. Set that off to the side. And I am an exile from the grave because they do have uh, Luris. Now would I get rid of Rancor or would I get rid of Ethereal Armor? Because it's probably what they're going to do. I don't think they'll path us here. Ethereal Armor gives first strike. Yeah. Force Ethereal Armor. So opponent plays Horizon Canopy. Ethereal Armor. And then they path the crab. All right. Let's get a swamp. So now they are out of mana for the turn. They're holding Griff's Boon, Rancor, Temple Garden, Temple Garden. Man, one thing's for sure is this deck has weird games. Opponent hits us for one, we go to 13. We draw Soaring Thought Thief, which means we play out Thieves Guild Enforcer, mill our opponent a bunch. Then we play Soaring Thought Thief, mill our opponent some more. Like, they can Rancor Griff's Boon, and that's a lot of damage, but like, <laughs> we could block if we have to. Oh man. And next turn we attack and then Ancestral Recall. And my opponent has to shock if they want three mana. So they play Temple Garden untapped. They Rancor. Okay. No way. That is the top deck of the century. <laughs> so now we have to draw uh, something to deal with that. That's really dumb. All right. We untap. We draw Soaring Thought Thief. Can I even do anything about this? Play the Thought Thief. We mill my opponent for four. We Visions to draw three. I can Shock, mill them for f six, and then attack and mill two, four, six. That's not enough. That has First Strike. What is left in my opponent's hand? A Griff's Boon? So we basically have to end up double blocking with the Thought Thieves. All right, this is very weird, but we might win via mill out here. So play Thieves Guild Enforcer, mill our opponent for a lot, go to combat, we attack like this, we mill them for 8. If I attack for here, I mill them for 12. They go to 7 cards. They're going to have 7 power at least. We go down to 12 cards in deck. I think we attack like... Oh, if we attack with a Thought Thief, they have to block. They gain life, though. I'm trying to calculate too many things at once. <sighs> if it wasn't for that stupid Daybreak Coronet, we'd have had them. So maybe that force was premature. I don't know. So we attack, we mill them for eight. We attack, we mill them for f four. Like this. They block one of them. We put Luris into our hand. We have to keep both Thought Thieves back to block or we just lose. So. Alright. We mill two. We mill two. Yep. They gain six and take five, so they go up to 14. Pass the turn. They untap. They play Griff's Boon. And Ethereal Armor? What? Now even if I double block, we just lose. That's disgusting. All right. We actually got really close to milling them out, I'm surprised. Um, I think I want the Surgicals. Boggle can be countered by Mystical Dispute, but I I think I want the Thought Seizes. This does nothing. Do I want the Mystical Dispute? Do I want the Aether Gust? I don't think so. I think I'm going to cut Of One Mind, and I'm going to cut Drown in the Lock down to two. The only reason I'm doing that, well, no, I'll cut the Cling to Dusts, and I'll keep the one extra Drown in the Lock. <sighs> Aether Gust is nice. Because while it doesn't counter Daybreak Coronet, if they have a green enchantment like Rancor, we can take it off and then fizzle the Daybreak Coronet. But we definitely should have won that, that game. That was just a really disgusting top deck. All right, we'll play first. And by disgusting, I mean incredibly good. All right. Uh, yeah, I will keep this. I am going to lead on Thoughtseize, I think. Simply because I do have Force. If they keep a hand with only one threat, um, nerds! <sighs> All right, there goes my entire game plan. <laughs> Play Ruin Crab. <laughs> so how does this work? Uh, the only way this like we win is if my opponent just like keeps a hand with only a Boggle or with only a Core Spirit Dancer and like we surgical it. Like <laughs> I don't, I don't know what what to do here. At least it's each opponent mills. 
is what we're dealing with. But it runs out of Boggle. We untap. Did my opponent also side into more cards than they normally have? They did. Why do people do that? Like, with Boggles, it's a little easier to get away with, but, like, you have to mulligan to a threat. And if you don't, it's just awful. Like, if I was if I was playing Boggles and I sided into 65 cards or whatever, I would mulligan to three, find a Boggle with no lands, and then never draw a land, and you know it to be true. So, like, there's no way what my opponent is doing is correct. Neither of them. They play a Plains. Just play a core spirit and answer. No, <laughs> stop. Um, I can counter this, but I give up my Snapcaster to do that. We just lose the Daybreak Coronet. That's the problem. And so it's like I want to save Force of Negation for Daybreak Coronet, but if I don't counter this... Yeah, all right. The first strike is what is the problem. We untap, draw Flooded Strand, play Flooded Strand, mill our opponent, fetch with Flooded Strand get an island, mill our opponent, put Luris into our hand, and hit them for two. Man, I wish I had a surgical for that Daybreak Coronet. <sighs> opponent plays a Horizon Canopy. This is like Rancor. Okay, Spirit Dancer. Hopefully we can push Spirit Dancer. They play a Griff's Boon, so the Boggle flies now. They hit us for two. We take two, go to 15, untap. We draw a Surgical Extraction. Okay. Fatal push here, go to combat, attack for two, we mill Keen Sense and Razor Verge Thicket, take them to 12, stop on their draw step, Surgical Daybreak Coronet. They have an All That Glitters and Spirit Link. So they're actually still just unbeatable. <laughs> like, like they, have, <laughs> they, they just have Build Your Own Daybreak Coronet. <laughs> Like, you can't... We we actually cannot beat this. Um, uh, yep. There's the fetch. They can even play Spirit Dancer into, like, All That Glitters. Uh, they may even just play Spirit Link first. Because I think they had one other one-mana aura. They just, like, draw two cards. Uh-huh. Yep. We're gonna gain life. And a lot of it. Another Boggle. Well, at least they only hit us for two. But we will be very dead very quickly. We draw a crab, go to combat, attack our opponent for two in the air. We're taking a minimum of seven next turn that gains them life. So we'll attack them to mill them. Then we play Luris. This isn't a May, and it can't target my opponent. So play Luris. Oh, we're just we're just dead because we have no way to answer that boggle or anything attached to it. And for some ungodly reason, I forgot that they run Leylight of Sanctity, which is something I should know because I played Boggles for a while. Like, why did I bring in the Hand Hate? It was absolutely a mistake. I should have kept the Mystical Dispute, especially on the play, because then I could counter the Boggle for one mana. I should have, yeah. There's just no other... Never mind, we're actually dead. Why would you put it there? Nothing on the board flies! Just put it on the boggle and kill me. <laughs> it's not like I'm going to Council's Judgment you. Oh, this, that was gross. Touche, Boggles player, you got me. I'll see you guys in round three. I'm I'm not even mad about the Boggles thing. It just, like, that was a deck that lined up in a way with ours in such a way that we just, there was no way we were winning that ever. Not with these cards. We'll start by revealing Luris. This hand is almost great. If we had two lands, like one of these drowns or one of the Thought Thieves was a land, this would be perfect. Oh, this is so unbelievably tempting. Um, I'm going to five, though. All right, I can I, I can take this over uh, the other. So we'll keep... I think of one mind, we're more likely to cast than Visions of Beyond. So drop Visions of Beyond, and I'm going to drop a Scalding Tarn. And we are going to lead on Hedron Crab. Now, if I was worried about a Thought Seize, I could have put back Of One Mind, and my opponent may only suspect that I have um, regular mill cards. Okay, well, Blood Chief's Thirst is pretty bad for us. We draw an island, play an island, pass the turn. Um, any deck that plays Blood Chief's Thirst plays like one or two usually, and then splits with Fatal Push, I think. So surgicaling that I, does not strike me as correct. <sighs> All right, um, either way to play this... To play the of one mind or play the thought thief, we have to fetch. 
Honestly, I think I cast this of one mind because if I know anything, I think my opponent's deck is playing smallpox. I have a suspicion. Pass the turn. Now, because I have multiple surgicals and I really would like to know what's going on in my opponent's hand, I'm going to do this now. They had another one. Unbelievable. And this is the... It's not the smallpox deck. But it is definitely Orzhov Stoneblade. So they have Fatal Push, Field of Ruins, Kaya's Guile, Silent Clearing, Tide Hollow Skull. <laughs> oh, this is going to be another really tough matchup. Hang on, let me get the snipping tool. New. Get a, get a copy of that so I don't forget. And then, yep. All right. But it goes to their main phase, plays Silent Clearing, plays Tide Hollow Sculler. They can take whatever they want. Soaring Thought Thief right now is very bad. So I'm surprised that they took it, but I guess that's just for Fatal Push related reasons. We draw a Thieves Guild Enforcer. If I play Hedron Crab, that's going to bait the Fatal Push, which I could then Surgical, and then it would be less likely that they're drawing removal, I suppose. They untap. They play Feel. So we know they're holding Kaya's Guile and a Fatal Push. They attack us for two. This does not have Death Touch prior to the threshold mechanic man if i play thieves guild enforcer they just push and kaya's guile and we're out but i mean i guess i still like i can't just sit here and do nothing each opponent sacks a creature make a spirit uh yeah flash thieves guild enforcer make our opponent mill liliana the veil vale. think i sack the crab and they push the enforcer we untap we draw visions and beyond Put Luris into our hand. And I think I'm going to Surgical Lily. They have Inquisition of Kozilek. <laughs> like, well, their entire hand is like, their entire deck is just answers. So it's going to be good against us. So we get Inquisition and they take Luris because Luris is probably the only thing that can get us out of this mess in any respectable degree. Uh-huh. Then they can play Godless Shrine Tapped or they can cycle Silent Clearing. They do. They play Godless Shrine Tap. They have one unknown card in their hand. They hit us for three. We untap. Draw Obero. Cycle Visions? All right, next game. <laughs> There's no way we could beat three power on the board. Oh, that's terrible. Um, What do we do? Most of our counter spells are not good versus what our opponent is doing. So my opponent is trying to one for one. Um... With the occasional, like, one-for-one one plus, like Kaya's Guile, which is almost like a two-for-one, and can some of the time be. So I think Force Negation is really bad, because um, we have to give up two cards to take out something of our opponents. So I think I would rather have Surgicals or Thought Seizes. Complete, complete honesty here. Man, what do we do? The Drown in the Locks feel somewhat bad. I'm going to cut one for a Thought Seize, just because we're on the play. And then we'll run it back. I think when this deck was constructed, this was not the uh, type of deck we were thinking we would play against. So, all right, I'd like to play first. I will reveal Luris. You know what? Sure, I will keep it. Start by shocking a watery grave. Pass. Opponent starts Godless Shrine tapped, so we'll flash in a Thieves Guild Enforcer. We mill Fatal Push, untap, we draw Surgical Extraction, Surgically Extract Fatal Push, Confidant, Confidant, Sword, Oriok Champion. So something tells me that Sword is probably going to be an issue. Play Hedron Crab, go to combat, hit them for one. Oriok Champion's a little bit of an issue because of Fatal Push not hitting it, but... Uh-huh. Can we draw an island? So play a crab. Opponent gains a life. Play an island. Mill them for seven. Save targets. Always yield. Mill our opponent a bunch. Pass the turn. Can't attack into an Oriok Champion. Opponent plays a Concealed Courtyard. Plays a Sword of Fire and Ice. We untap. Draw Cling to Dust. They just equip Oriok Champion and then we have to start blocking with crabs. 
So I'm going to exile a marsh flat and hopefully draw a land here, like a fetch land. That is not what I asked for. That is also not what I asked for. Pass the turn. Opponent shocks a godless shrine, suits up Oriok champion, attacks us for three. That has protection from blue. <laughs> oh, yep. Mm hmm. We were missing land drops, so, like, we didn't have the counter spell available. And rest in peace. All right. You got it. We untap. Draw surgical, which now does nothing. Of one mind. Uh, we're just gonna die. Like, our. Our Drown in the Lock does nothing. Our Rogues can't get big. Snapcaster Mage can't flash back anything. Surgical doesn't hit anything. Thoughtseize grabs something from our opponent but makes us die quicker. Lily. Alright, yeah, you, you got us, opponent. We cannot race that. We have literally nothing in the deck that can answer that Oriok champion. Not now. Alright, I'll see you guys in round four. Alrighty, round four, and we are on the play. I will start by revealing Luris. Alright, we got a Crab, we got a Fetchland, we got a Thieves Guild Enforcer. Let's do it. So, I think we start by playing the Thieves Guild Enforcer. And the reason that I say that is because if I lead on the Crab... My opponent could just kill it before we get any value out of it. Next turn, we're guaranteed to get value out of it. This also makes my opponent think I might be doing something scary. Okay, they fetch with Bloodstain Mire. They get an Overgrown Tomb, so it's probably Jund Death Shadow. Okay, now I wish I had Lead on the Crab. Flash in Thieves Guild Enforcer. Mill my opponent. Inquisition Colagon's Command. They take the Crab. Then they play Bobble. Crack Bobble. They untap, draw a card. Or we untap, they draw a card. Then we draw a Snapcaster Mage. Play Watery Grave tapped. Go to combat. Hit them for one. They untap. They play another Bobble. Sack it to draw. And they play a big, gigantic Tarmogoyf, which does get pushed. We untap. They draw a card. Then we draw a card. Scalding Tarn. I should have played the Misty because they knew about the Misty. Get an island. Put a Luris in our hand. And our opponent for one. Opponent untaps. They play a Verdant. Into a Blood Crypt. Thought sees us. So they can take Luris. They do. Thieves Guild Enforcer now a 3-2. We get Thought Seized again. There goes Snapcaster. They go to 8. And then they bolt Thieves Guild Enforcer. Alright. Draw Swamp. I'm going to cycle Visions even though that feels bad. Play Soaring Thought Thief. I guess there's no reason to play out lands until we get a crab at this point. Opponent plays a Tarmogoyf. We untap. We draw Surgical. I cannot deny... I guess I could Surgical the Mishra's Bobble to save one damage. Because that would be the only artifact that's in the grave. Go to combat. Attack my opponent for two. We mill Swift Spear and Fatal Push. Hit them for two. They go to six. Stop on their draw. I could try and Surgical Lightning Bolt. And I probably would have surgical Team or Battle Rage because they always have one somehow. But okay... I have another Tarmogoyf as well, which is not a good good outlook for us. They go to combat, they attack us for four. Is this just a battle rage? It is not. They play Goyf. They play Bloodstain Mire. Team of Battle Rage, last card in hand. We draw Drown in the lock. Alright, play a Swamp, go to combat, attack them for two, mill them. Lightning Bolt and Tarmogoyf. Hit them to four. My only hope is that they try and get greedy and team or battle rage while we're, um, without it being actually lethal. Porter, what are you doing? What are you doing, buddy? They get a blood crypt and untap. Hey, leave that alone. One moment.
Uh, Porter was just like, what's a big spider? Because, of course, his opponent shocks, goes to combat, attacks us for eight. We take eight and go to five. They put Lurus into their hand. Okay. We untap. Draw Cling to Dust. Cling to Dust. I'm going to hit a not... I'm going to hit Swift Spear because that's something they can replay immediately. No, because Swift Spear... Ugh. Problem with Swift hitting Swift Spear just d doesn't draw us a card. If we draw another Soaring Thought Thief, um, we kill our opponent because it anthems our Thought Thief. We do three damage then. So there's nothing they can replay immediately with Lurus that we would care about because we just counter Lurus. Hit the Bloodstain Mire. We get a Hedron Crab. Now Hedron Crab is nice because Hedron Crab blocks. And that may force my opponent to reevaluate and use Team or Battle Rage. Play a Mountain. Mill my opponent. Go to combat. Oh, there's a Seal of Fire now. That's actually an issue. So we have to counter Lurus. Oh, we're just dead. We're just dead because we milled them into a Seal of Fire. Which makes a single Goyf lethal. <sighs> we needed that to not be lethal. My opponent could, in theory, punt this away. I shouldn't have milled my opponent. I should have known better. They go to combat. So the only way we actually live is if my opponent tries to team or battle rage for no reason, the wrong one. Or like F6s through their turn. <sighs> yep, there it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll bring in Lull Mage's Domination, because this seems like the deck we should have it against. Force Negation is very bad versus them. And... I think I cut maybe a Thought Thief here. We'll try it like this. You know what I just realized? This entire league, I've been playing Thought Thieves at sorcery speed. They have Flash. There's a wall of text on this card. They have Flash. I, for some reason, only thought Thieves Guild Enforcer had Flash. So apologies to anybody who's screaming at me like, What are you doing? Uh, that would be why. I know I named it right when I started, too, when I was doing, like, deck tech kind of thing. Um, yeah, we can't keep a five lander. This is reasonably better. I'm going to put back a Visions of Beyond. Begin with uh, Ruin Crab, because it dodges Seal of Fire. Hedron Crab does not. And it also dodges Tar Fire. So, when it starts a Blood Crypt, into a Swift Spear. I'm going to block. They'd have to have, like, Gut Shot or Mutagenic Growth, and they don't have it. Play Crab. Play Polluted Delta. Fetch with Polluted Delta. Get a Watery Grave untapped. We need to get the Watery Grave because we need Triple Blue and uh, for Lull Mage's Domination. And we need Black to be able to flash in Thieves Guild Enforcer. No attacks. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Shocks a Blood Crypt. Pushes a Crab. Pushes a Crab. <laughs> Alright. The old double Fatal Push. So... I think, hang on, hang on. We have two options. We can either play Thieves Guild Enforcer, block and take out the Swift Spear, wait till they play their next threat and Lull Mage's Domination. The problem with that is they almost certainly have a bunch of Thought Seizes, um, and we take extra damage. The alternative is playing Lull Mage's Domination and stealing the Swift Spear. I think we just gotta go Thieves Guild Enforcer as a kill spell here. All right, untap. They draw. We draw Obero. So I'm going to play Watery Grave tapped. I'm not going to put Lurus in my hand. I'm going to wait until I have four lands on the battlefield so that I can Lurus and then play Thieves Guild Enforcer or play Crab or something. Well, Mage's Domination is not an instant, so, you know, it's not like we're leaving it up. It gets Thought Seized because, of course, it does. They play another Bobble. Crack it. They hit us for three. We go to 14. Untap. They draw a card. We draw Soaring Thought Thief. Play Obero. Pass the turn. Remembered this has Flash. Not sure that that's going to matter. Opponent attacks us for one. Hits us down to 13. And they put Lurus into their hand. Flash in Thought Thief. 
we untap, we draw Visions of Beyond, which is an Ancestral Recall here. That's pretty good. Okay. Visions of Beyond again. I could even Snapcaster and do it a third time. Play Ruined Crab. Play Scalding Tarn. Mill my opponent. Fetch with Scalding Tarn. Get a basic island. Mill my opponent. Go to combat. Attack them for two in the air. Mill them for two. Hit them to 12. Opponent untaps. They bolt the crab. They go to combat. Hit us for two. We go down to 10. Then they play Death Shadow. We untap, draw crab, play crab, play a fetch land, mill our opponent, fetch, play an island, mill our opponent, they have Croxa. I really want to Snapcaster Mage, Visions of Beyond, and draw three more cards, but I also just want to, like, Lull Mage's Domination. Take their Death Shadow, which is now bigger because we have it. Go to combat. Attack them for two in the air. Mill Verdant Catacombs and Scourge. They go down to ten. We untap, or they untap. They play Scourge of the Skyclaves. And a Verdant. So they can play Croxa next turn if they want. We untap. Draw Flooded Strand, play Flooded Strand, mill our opponent, fetch with Flooded Strand. I'm doing this actually out of order, I should have, um, should have Snapcastered first. Snapcaster Mage. I want a Visions, but I actually think Lull Mage is better. Nice. Got a game. Mm, I think we're set up as good as we can be. Just run it back. So start by revealing Lurus. Double Crab is a good start. We're going to keep. Probably going to get wrecked by Thoughtseize, but... Opponent starts Blood Crypt into a Swift Spear. Hits us for one. We get a 19. We untap. We draw Polluted Delta. Play Watery Grave, play Hedron Crab, pass the turn. Opponent untaps, plays a Swamp, Inquisitions. So they're probably going to take the second Crab and then use a removal spell on the first. Because after that we're just dead in the water. Like we don't, we don't have any other action going on right now. Alright, they took Fatal Push. They left us with our Crab. Or other crab, anyway. So play the crab. Play Polluted Delta. Mill our opponent. Fetch. Mill them again. Okay, that's not really what I wanted. I wanted to mill a creature so I could cling. Um... Two instants, two sorceries, lots of land. I could cling to dust my own Hedron Crab to shrink a goyf temporarily, but... We also want the Hedron Crab in the grave because of Lurus. Opponent untaps. They thought sees us. Might as well do this to gain some life. They fatal push the other crab. Okay. Sure. Not sure why you needed to do that in response, but all right. They take Lull Mage's Domination. So we're just stuck with a option of really bad Divination. Actually, not even really bad Divination, just straight up Divination. Um, and we get a Thieves Guild Enforcer. Play out Polluted Delta. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They go to combat and attack. Flash in the Enforcer. 
This would be amazing if they had no way to pump that Swift Spear and we just got a free kill on it. And absolutely horrendous if they just had, like, Team or Battle Rage. Oh, man. We actually got it. That's amazing. How often does that happen? Scourge of the Skyclaves. All right. Well, at least we have a Death Touchy creature. We untap and draw Soaring Thought Thief. I now understand why I was playing this pre-combat. It's because you want to play it, then attack with it. <clears throat> Hmm, okay, well we definitely get aggressive here, because if we don't, and my opponent has Teamer Battle Rage, we die. And if we do, and my opponent has Teamer Battle Rage, we die. We might as well try and mill Teamer Battle Rage. This also does technically let us do one extra point of damage. Go to combat. Hit them for four, mill them for two. Opponent obviously does not block. Oh, we just doubled the size of Scourge? We were still dead if they hit us and had Teamer Battle Rage. They go to combat, they attack us for 8. We got a block, because we're otherwise in bolt range. Best top deck is Crab. But it plays a Bloodstained Mire and passes. They fetch on our upkeep. We draw... Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> right after we asked for it, too. So play the Crab. Fetch up a basic island, mill our opponent, pass the turn. We need Lull Mage's Domination, of which we have one more in the deck, I think. Opponent attacks for 10. We chump, because otherwise we die. Alright, they did not have... I have a Death Shadow, okay. We untap. Lull Mage's Domination. Of one mind. Well, if we're dying anyway, let's know what our next two cards are. Nope. All right, well, I will see you all in round five. All right, round five. We'll reveal Luris. Um, we definitely have better openers than this. It's too many lands. All right, that's just the right number of lands. I'm going to put back Jace's Phantasm, I think. Opponent starts to Laria West, so we do get to lead on Crab here. Ideally drawing second Crab, but pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Mmm... Mono Blue Tron. I see. Wow. So I don't know if anyone remembers the opening deck tech, but literally 90% of the cards in the opening deck tech are one drops. Because I had to have a, an entire row for one drops, an entire row for uh, one of them a blue and one of them black one drops. I guess we'll play it out and maybe we'll learn something, but I might concede this one. Just because I don't think we can actually beat that chalice. All right, we untap. We draw a Ruin Crab. Oh, we would have had the double crab start. Play Misty. Mill our opponent. Power Plant and Mine. Fetch Misty. Get a Watery Grave. Untapped. Mill Obro, Chalice, Repeal. And I'm going to swing zero to let my opponent know I'm displeased. I have one technically castable card in hand. I probably should have just played it on my turn, too, because my opponent does play counter spells. Flash it in on my opponent's end step. All right, we untap. Draw Drown in the lock. Go to combat. Attack and mill our opponent. Two islands. Okay. Opponent takes two. Play of one mind. Because we would like to draw land for this Drown in the lock if possible. Mm, that's not what happened though. Pass the turn. Now I don't get to leave up Drown in the lock. Thirst for knowledge. Opponent discard. They're playing so many chalices. Oh my gosh. Pretty sure my opponent could just go like land Chalice of the Void on two and we would be done. And they got a blast zone, and they're passing. We untap, draw Flooded Strand, play Flooded Strand, mill our opponent. Crack Flooded Strand, get an island, mill our opponent. Go to combat, attack for two, mill our opponent. Opponent takes two. Okay, uh... I think I'm just gonna try and leave up Drown in the lock. I was thinking about Snapcastering of One Mind. I could drown this, but I think I'd rather drown a threat. So let them draw... They untap. They discarded Talisman of Dominance. But it plays Power Plant. Counter Karn. We untap. Draw Jace's Phantasm. So I'm going to Snapcaster Mage targeting of one mind. Of one mind. Another Drown in the Lock is good, but... Fetch Watery Grave tapped. Go to combat. Uh, we've milled three Urza's... We've milled all four Urza's Mines, so there will be no Troning for our opponent. Which is good. 
Opponent untaps. They repeal the crab, which we cannot replay. Oh, joy. They play another power plant, and they pass. Interesting. We untap. So many crabs. Go to combat. They just tick up blast zone to two, though, and then we lose. <laughs> Mill them for two. Mill Island and Karn Great Creator. Hit them down to ten. Pass the turn. Yep. Ticking up to two. Discard Ruin Crab. Because it's a card they know about. They untap. Oh, I might actually lose to Academy Ruins unless I've milled it already. Activate Blast Zone. We lose our board. We untap. Draw Hedron Crab. Pass the turn. Discard Cling to Dust. Opponent untaps. They play a Talisman. That's fine. Walking Ballista on one. Yeah, that gets countered. That's a threat we can't deal with. Opponent passes. Draw of one mind. I'm going to cast it because I do want to draw more lands. And hopefully other things we can cast. I guess we're banded. Alright. Pass the turn. At least we don't have to discard. Opponent has 11 cards left in their deck. I don't see Academy Ruins anywhere. So... They probably have yet to draw it, or they're holding on to it. Uh, cast of one mind. Okay, it gets condescended. I will not pay for it. But it puts one card on the bottom and one card on the top. Play Polluted Delta. Pass the turn. Oh, if my opponent did not have that chalice, we would definitely have won already. Sorry for the yawns. They play a power plant. And they're passing. Fetch with Polluted Delta. Get a swamp. We untap. We draw a Thieves Guild Enforcer. Put Luris into our hand. Pass the turn. Discard Hedron Crab. They untap. They draw. They have nine cards left. We draw a Ruin Crab. Well, the odds of my opponent as a counter spell is only ever going to go up. And it's not like they play Mana Leak, so if they have Condescend, they have Condescend. And they do, because of course they would. So we lose Luris, and with it, our only means of actually clocking our opponent. And like I said, the instant that they find and or play an Academy Ruins, we just lose. I guess if we had a Soaring Thought Thief, and my opponent had Academy Ruins, there is some potential... Okay, we're dead in two swings. Uh, yep. Yeah, that was a long, long game. Alright. <clears throat> For Tron slash Thoughtseize.deck, I really... I don't want to bring in more one-drops, because my opponent is maxed out on Chalice. They're playing three in the main deck. And they may even have a fourth. Uh, we don't play Aether Gust. We probably can play Mystical Dispute just to have less one drops. I'm going to drop the Clings for the Disputes. And I'm going to bring in the Surgicals over Fatal Pushes because those do nothing. I guess Thought Seize is better than Fatal Push. Especially us being on the play. I'll play first. Reveal Luris. Thieves Guild Enforcer, Force, Mystical Dispute. All right, sure. Not 100% if this is good or not, but uh, we'll find out. Start Misty Rainforest, because we do want to get a Watery Grave right away. This lets me Thieves Guild Enforcer or Mystical Dispute or Force, depending. Opponent starts Tron Land. So fetch up Misty to get a Watery Grave. Thieves Guild Enforcer, mill our opponent. Karn, Great Creator, and an Island. Alright, we untap. Draw Crab. Play Crab. Play Polluted Delta. Mill our opponent. Save targets always yield. Getting dismembered. Fetch. 
shock. Just for the mill, because this does speed up our clock with um, Thieves Guild Enforcer. Go to combat. Opponent is also playing Surgical Extraction against us. Hit them for three. They go to 13. They untap. Play an Urza's Tower. Chalice on one. So, Pitch Dispute. We untap. Draw Visions. Play Swamp. Go to combat. Hit them for three. Opponent goes to ten. They untap. They play an Obero. So on their end step, we'll Visions. We get a Polluted Delta. Untap. We draw Surgical. Play Polluted Delta. Go to combat. Hit them for three. Down to seven. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps on their draw step. I'm going to Surgical Karn. They do have a Karn. They have multiple Remands and an Ugin. And two Walking Ballistas. Unfortunately, they don't have a Walking Ballista in the grave, because, like, Snapcaster Surgical on Walking Ballista would be amazing. I could just Snapcaster Visions to get a cantrip here, and I think I'm going to. Opponent, I think, remands this. Because they pretty desperately need a draw. Or they remand the visions, at least. Actually, I'm not going to cast it. We untap. We draw Soaring Thought Thief. Go to combat. Hit them for five. So now, like, their only option is to draw a land and play Walking Ballista, block Thieves Guild Enforcer, and ping down Snapcaster. We flash Soaring Thought Thief in response to a Walking Ballista and win. All right, that worked out. Uh, run it back. I'm not making any adjustments at this point. All right. Start by revealing Luris. This hand is either really high power or really awful. So we're going to try keeping it. When it starts Urza's Mine, we draw an island. So, Fetch, Shock, and Thoughtseize. Put a mulligan to five. Ballista, Karn, Chalice, Academy Ruins. So take Chalice. Stop on my opponent's draw step. Surgical Chalice. They drew a tower. All right, so they play tower, they play ballista. Yup, this is a problem. We untap, draw polluted delta, visions, draw thieves guild enforcer. I'm gonna fetch up a basic swamp and play the thieves guild enforcer. Now, if I mill a power plant or I mill a carn, I surgical. Okay, remand to Laria West. Neither of those are worth uh, casting Surgical, so pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They play on Urza's Mine, which is a card we didn't know about, but they will have Karn by next turn. We untap. Draw Crab. Play Crab. Play an Island. Kind of hoping to mill a Karn. There it is. Pass the turn. Uh, I'm actually going to attack. Stop on their draw step. Surgical Karn, paying mana. They have a Condescend Academy Ruins now. And Instant Speed Discard is just strong. So my opponent can play Academy Ruins, put a second counter on Ballista, and they can either shoot down the Crab right away, or they could, like, ping the Thieves Guild Enforcer. They attack. All right, no blocks. We know their last card is a Condescend, so they can't do anything. Okay, they put a counter on Ballista. That's fine. They hit us for two. They kill Thieves Guild Enforcer. We untap, draw Obero, play Island, mill our opponent, Visions, Surgical. Uh, you know what? Yeah. We'll stop on their draw step and Surgical Condescend. Because <laughs> we know they're holding it. Uh, just gives them less to do. I did miss out on putting Luris in my hand, which may have been important. Opponent just drew Dismember. Alright. So they have to choose between Dismember or Counter on Ballista. They hit us for one. No blocks. They counter up Ballista. We got an eight. 
Untap, Draw Crab, Play Crab 2, Revenge of the Crab, Play Obero, Mill our opponent, uh, put Lurus into our hand, pass the turn. I think we need like a fetch land. Really, we need a fatal push. Opponent draws an island. So they can start Academy Ruinsing things if they want. They attack us for two, but they're not going to. They're just going to put counters on Ballista. Now they have counter on Ballista plus Dismember if they want. And that matters a lot. We could hit down to five. Untap. We draw Scalding Tarn. Play Scalding Tarn. Mill our opponent. If I fetch, I just lose. Uh, and I don't have three black sources, so I can't play Luris into Thieves Guild Enforcer. Which means I have to chump. Opponent untaps. They go to combat. They attack us for three. So we chump. They dismember the crab. We untap. We draw Soaring Thought Thief, which doesn't really do anything. I can play Luris. And then cast Crab. Pick up Obero. Replay it. Mill my opponent. And then we lose because my opponent just puts a counter on Ballista, untaps, puts a counter on Ballista, and kills us. Yep. All right. You got me, opponent. Well, I tried to fight hard. Um, we got some one-twos. Uh, I'm going to talk about this deck for a moment. So I'm having a little bit of trouble understanding the competitive advantage. And I don't mean like... In theory, I understand what it is. In theory, it's... Um, you know, if your primary mill game plan isn't working, you can still beat your opponent down. And that, I think, is kind of a flawed concept, because if you're not all in on mill, I don't think mill is fast enough. And so, if you were to try and play a deck like this, you could do one of two things. Either you can move it back towards the regular type of mill, which just tries to mill really, really hard, has... An advantage to doing so, it's running Archive Trap, it mills huge numbers of cards at a time. Uh, then you can stabilize with Crypt Incursions, and you can back it all up with Counter Spells and Hand Hate, and you have good repeatable mill engines that don't die to Lightning Bolts and Fatal Pushes and stuff like that. So that's option one. Option two, and I think that this option is worth exploring. Um, there is an alternative type of deck that can be played here. And my mind jumps to something like fairies, but weirder. Now, fairies is very strong because everything has flash. And part of the thing I was thinking about while doing this is you have some very strong uh, flash. You have a very strong flash one, one drop in this deck. It's relatively easy to turn on. It's a one mana three, two, and it has death touch. So it's a kill spell when you want it to be a kill spell. It's a mill card when you want it to be a mill card. Helps turn on things like surgical extraction. It's kind of like a thought scour sort of. So I think what I would do, if I was going to take a deck like this, I would have dropped the Visions of Beyond, I'd play Thought Scours, I would drop most of the mill plan, I would I would just use the incidental milling as a way to turn uh, my Soaring Thought Thieves, Thieves Guild Enforcers, into better threats. I don't think I would play Jace's Phantasm, and I would try and play a deck with, like, the Flash Threats, Snapcasters, like, Spell Pierces, Spell Snares, maybe... Um, you do like Ninja of the Deep Hours or the Infiltrator, the Demir Infiltrator Ninja, where you are drawing cards as you're connecting, which fuels your uh, threats. It gives you answers. Like Then you can start playing cards like Force of Negation that are card disadvantaged to help protect your guys. And um, the Incidental Mill just helps make your guys better uh, rather than try to be a dedicated like Rogue Mill deck. I think that's the better way to go with this. Uh, just judging from what I've learned, because this deck during this league, we noticed that like our best hands had like our best hands required too many cards to work. Like, you know, we wanted to play Thieves Guild Enforcer, which forced me to take an awkward line where I didn't play the crab and uh, then the crab gets thought seized or, you know, I want to lead on crab. But then if I don't play Enforcer, then my soaring thought thief is an awkward turn two, and and so on and so forth of one mind felt sweet. It's kind of like Thoughtcast from Affinity, the old Affinity days. Uh, and I definitely think Of One Mind is probably better in this deck than Visions of Beyond is. So I think I would go up to four of those if I was going to play a similar deck. Uh, and it also could work in like the, the ninja deck that I was just describing. Um, especially if you have fairies, because you have Snapcaster Mages, then you have fairies, then you have, you know, like... You could even play Fallen Shinobi, that's a zombie. You don't really need of one mind at that point, but you could. 
And I think there's... I don't think this deck is good, but I think that this deck has exposed some good synergies that deserve to be investigated. I don't know if they're good, but there's some underlying power here that I think should be investigated. Um, I don't want to bash on this deck. I think it's sweet. It's it's just not on the power level that modern needs for a competitive deck. Um, you know, we got we got a couple of good mill out games that were really cool. Uh, we only lost to Boggles in the one game because our opponent just top decked their like one of two remaining Daybreak Coronets. We just couldn't beat the life gain. We had no answer to that threat. Um, yeah, I I think that's all I got to say. I'm pretty tired at this point, so I. I don't by any means want to insult this deck or its creator. Um, Clayton is an excellent deck brewer. I get zany decks posted from him in deck suggestions in the Discord channel, which you should totally join, all the time. Um, and I always appreciate his insight because it pushes me to brew my own decks occasionally and do something interesting. So I'm very thankful that you sent this to me, Clayton. I'm happy that I got to play it. Um... And like I said, you've given me some ideas of where to take similar strategies that I think are worth investigating and might turn into something really cool. Uh, I know you said, and I, I, I forgot to mention this at the beginning, but this deck was built during a different metagame. It was it was built during like the Uro um, Omnath metagame, and it was kind of meant to help fight that sort of thing going on. And I can see how it would have been better, because if your opponent was playing, you know, Uro Omnath, the incidental milling early on helps a lot. Uh, you know, it exposes your opponent to surgical. I think those decks were somewhat weak to surgical, um, and they were slower. I think with those decks gone, the metagame has sped up in on average because those decks were trying to win turns, you know, five, six, seven, and now we have we're back to like the turn four win style of decks. So, um, unless the metagame slows down, I don't think this particular deck or strategy will work uh efficiently enough so alrighty, that's all i have um thank you everybody so much for watching if you like this video please leave a like drop a comment subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined and remember you can follow me on twitch same username over there as you find me on here i stream wednesdays at 6 p.m mountain time 8 p.m eastern standard time though the last few have been earlier and uh like i said link in the discord if you want to talk to the creator of this deck you want to help uh brew up some new interesting fun decks for modern uh, as my primary format i would really appreciate some input uh, I've got a, at least one other deck in the queue that I need to play. I'm working on a better voting system than rather just having people that uh, redeem decks uh, on Twitch because I feel bad about having to ask for so many channel points at a time and then I have to limit the number of deck redemptions or I will just, I'll never ever stop making videos uh, or I'll never get to play what I want to play. I have to always play what's in the queue, you know? Um, so yeah. I uh, think you're all wonderful human beings, and thank you so much for watching. Bye!